Caleb Forrest, congratulations. You guys have made it into the final round of this competition. Now we're sending you back to your home forges to recreate this iconic weapon from history. The Sword of Gujian. Good luck, Bladesmiths. We will see you in four days. Congratulations. We're going to take on the Sword of Gaujin today. I'm going to start at the tip, work back to the tang. I'm keeping the blade rather thick because I just don't want to mess with any twisting and bending once it quenches. I am surprised how fast this is coming along. So far, so good. Now, time to get the blade hot so I can quench it. I'm happy. I think we have a little fork in it here and there, but nothing the uh, grinder won't take care of. Today, I have to get started on my sword. I'm bringing these new school vibes to this really old school weapon. Instead of bronze, I'm bringing Damascus to the table. Hopefully, this will just give me a really, really cool contrast with the pattern whenever I'm done with it. All the welds are set good. I'm getting the metal drawn out. Good, nice square bar. From there, I'm trying to go for a twist pattern. I want quite a few good twists in there, pretty tight pattern. All right, that'll do. <laughs> the end of day one, it's still not a weapon, but it's getting there. Today, I'm hoping to have my guard fitted on, maybe even the handle. For my guard, I'm going to use a piece of angle iron. The guard's rounded over, now I'm just going to put a hole through the bottom to go over the tank. Uh, the guard actually split. Cracked it. All that fun for nothing. So I have to uh, start over. I have a pile of railroad spikes. That would be putting the uh, new school into the bronze metal, old school sword. Fits on the tang really nice, but there's more work to be done. The plan for today is to get to work on actually forging out the sword. My goal for the end of the day is definitely to get it quenched. This thing's getting long. Just trying to keep it where it's not too thin so that when I quench it, everything goes well. We're about ready. I'm really just hoping that nothing goes wrong here. This is the most important step of the entire process. Pretty straight. Excited with the quench. Wink well. Morning of day three, and I'm tired. First thing today, I'm going to make my blade lighter. Right now, the balance is about five inches in front of the guard. I would like it to be within an inch or two would make me happy. It's starting to feel lighter, but I have a lot more grinding to go. OK. I start grinding on my edge, and my belt sander just quits. I flip the breaker. I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I decided to go grab two extension cords and uh, run power from the house to the shop. We got, we got power somewhere else we can use. Plug the belt sander into the house power. And it works. Hopefully, now I can get the edge on the blade. My blade's looking uh, fine and uh, just needs a little more sharpening and polishing. Finally starting to see that light at the end of the tunnel now. First thing, I'm going to start on my disc pommel. I'm just going to take this piece of just normal mild steel, chop it off, and kind of try to forge it into a bit of a disc shape. I'm kind of out of square right now, and I'm looking more or less for a circle. I'm just going to kind of grind and polish off the top and make it into a truer circle. Time's running out. I need to sharpen my blade, and then finally finish and put together the sword. It's a little. Twisted. The handle on the blade is centered and it looks centered, but on the inside, as you can see right here, it's not perfectly centered. But of course, with a pin, an epoxy, and a disc and screw on the back, it's going to be very, very strong. Forrest really better bring it, because if not, I'm going to chop him down. Bladesmiths, welcome to the kill test to find out what kind of lethal damage your weapon will do according to its historic design. I will take your weapon, deliver some killing thrusts and blows on this ballistic dummy. Forrest, are you up for this? Yes, sir. Let's do this.
Right, Force, let's talk about your weapon here. And it's very forward heavy. What makes it hard to handle is the fact that you have a very skinny handle right here. A lot of these movements, your blade went upon contact was spinning in my hand. I had to adjust several times to make sure that I stay on the edge over here. Now the edge is sharp. Once it makes contact and you slash, it digs deep. Overall, sir, you will kill. All right, Caleb, you're up. You ready? I'll see it. <laughs> All right, Caleb, first up, the blade in itself, balance-wise, I think you nailed it. Now, your handle construction, it's ovoid, it's actively comfortable because of the balance and a very sharp edge. All the cuts are very, very deep. Overall, sir, it'll kill. Bladesmiths, welcome to the strength test, a gong chop. Test the strength and durability of your edges as well as the overall construction of your swords of Gujian. I'm going to be chopping them into these gongs. Horace, you're up first. You ready? Yes, sir. Well, Forrest, your sword did take some damage on the edge. There's some rolls sort of crushed in right here. Your handle is really small. A bigger handle would have helped me control this really well. But all that being said, that much damage and a big strength test like this, well done. Thank you. All right, Caleb, you're up. You ready? Heck yeah, man. Well, Caleb, you did a great job with the Damascus. I love to see this kind of stuff. It's beautiful. Your blade is still straight true, and the weight on this is, is phenomenal. There is one big issue, though. Your handle. It's loose now. Your handle is coming apart. I can move it. And their pommel is, is also loose. If these were right and tight and held in place, then it tends to help everything else stay where it is but just a little bit of play in this guard can send shockwaves right down the handle. But uh, gotta say, that's one heck of a blade. Thank it's you. just Thank you. You know, this handle that's really causing the issue now. Yes, sir. So that's we've got off. a pretty mobile opening that has a corresponding split on the back side of the handle. Not only is it loose, but the material that's loose has sharp edges. Okay. Yeah. I mean, this would require either taping that up or wearing a glove. And now we're not testing the same as the other one. OK. Ben? That's a gorgeous sword. I think the handle's gone. Uh, Dave? I don't kills me. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Doug? I agree. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, we've continued with blades that had loose parts before. We've continued with blades that had split handles before. Your handle has cracked. However, the combination of the two things has made your blade unsafe to continue with any testing. And therefore, you cannot be our Forged and Fire champion. I'd like to invite you to shake our hands, shake your competitor's hand, and then I have to ask you to please leave the forge. I can't blame the judge's decision. It's definitely unsafe to use at this point, but that's a good call. If I could have done it differently, probably would have put a pin or two in my handle. Might not have looked as good, but the use is more important than the looks. Thank you so much, for us. I appreciate it. I may not be the Forge and Fire champion, but man, I'm walking out of here with my head held high, and I'm proud. Forrest, congratulations. You are the Forge and Fire champion, and that is a title that comes with a check for $10,000, my friend. Good job. I'm on forward.
I'm thrilled that I'm the champion. It hasn't even soaked in yet, and next day or two, I'll really realize what's happened. Being a Forge and Fire champion means that I succeeded in the goal that I wanted to reach. Oh, so this is for everyone at home, and I'm coming home a Forge and Fire champion. Yeehaw!